The Lord be with you. Welcome to God's house on the fourth Sunday in Lent. This is also Daylight Saving Time weekend. Just a reminder, sometimes we forget, so that happens tonight. Um, lest your schedule tomorrow be upset, remember to do that. We uh, have something kind of special tonight. As a guest, not a guest, a member, a um, very special member, uh, but uh, Eldred Gerhold is going to sing um, and play the piano as well. And uh, it's just important to kind of know that he, on Monday is his birthday, and Eldred will be 103. Um, it's, it, this is the, we're going to sing a few times. We're going to sing right now to Eldred, okay? Along with me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Eldred. Happy birthday to you. God's blessings to you. God's blessings to you. God's blessings, dear Eldred. God's blessings to you. We're glad you're part of Trinity. Very glad. So he'll be singing after the Old Testament reading. Uh, this, this Wednesday at noon and at 6, we have Lenten services, um, a meal after the noon service, a meal before the 6 o'clock service. Uh, also, I'd like to um, uh, remind you that March 28th, that's a Sunday, March 28th, Sunday morning is a voters meeting. It's not the normal time for a voters meeting. The February meeting was postponed. So I uh, make note of that two weeks from tomorrow. Um, on Monday, Thursday, we will have, of course, Holy Communion. Uh, we all also have a guest uh, preacher, President Saunders, uh, Iowa District East District President, will be our preacher for the 10 a.m. and the 6 p.m. services on Monday, Thursday. And um, as announced last week, we are going to offer another mode of distribution of communion. Uh, we've been doing the uh, processional style, we call it. We just come up and walk. Uh, for a long time now, and we're still going to do that on Monday, Thursday, but at the same time, for any who may desire it, we'll have an opportunity to kneel at the altar rail. So you can do the one way or the other. You have two options uh, for that uh, Monday, Thursday service. Does anyone else have any other announcements? Okay, and um, this evening also, we're going to resume having children's messages. I'll just have a, a kind of a simple lesson for the uh, boys and girls after the, uh, 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 after the uh, creed. I, I'll give a little instruction about that, and, um, and they can come uh, into the chancel, any who may desire to come up. And uh, now I'll have you please turn to number 702, our opening hymn, and please stand.
please turn to page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God, our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us join in the intro at page three of your bulletin. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning, and though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday in Lent is from Numbers chapter 21. 
From Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord. Christ alive of all the living, Christ the death of death our foe, who thyself for me once given to the darkest depths of woe, to thy suffering death and marriage, I turn a life in hell. Thousand thanks shall be dearest Jesus unto thee. Heartless scoffers did surround thee, treating thee with scornful scorn, and with piercing swords they crowned thee. All disgrace thou, Lord, hast borne. That as I thought my best on me, and with heavenly glory crown thee, thousand, thousand thanks shall be, dearest Jesus, unto thee. Then for all that brought my pardon, for thy sorrows deep and sore, for thine anguish in the garden, I will thank thee evermore. Thank thee for thy groaning, sighing, for thy bleeding and thy dying for that last triumphant cry and shall praise thee Lord on high The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 2 And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, 
so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people loved the darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been carried out in God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And as announced, we'll have a children's message at this time. Are there any children who'd like to come forward? And if you you do want to come forward, um, and if you by any chance have uh, written anything on that little purple sheet, you can bring that forward as well, that little purple sheet in the bulletin. And if not, you still come on forward. That's all right. You guys want to come? It's been such a long time since we haven't had children's messages come right on up. There we go. Since the start of the year, since January, our bulletins have included a take-home page called, well, I call it Trinity Reads the Bible in 2021. Um, It's a Bible reading schedule, but more than that, it also has a place for children to um, listen to God's word and fill in some blanks and unscramble some words. Hi, guys. Thanks for coming up. So have you ever seen that purple page in in the bulletin? By the way, I love how both of you have violet on. That's a very Lenten color, and uh, maybe it was an accident, but it's wonderful uh, to tie these things together. Purple, yep. So there was that page in the bulletin, and it had some... um, some parts of the Bible readings which we heard, and you had a chance to fill in the blanks. The first one came from the Old Testament reading. Do you remember hearing about biting and serpents, which it means snakes? Do you remember hearing about that? And people dying from snake bites? That was the first reading. So it says, so Moses made a bronze serpent. Bronze is a kind of metal, right? Did you know that? Bronze is a kind of metal. So he melted some metal and then formed it to look like a a snake. A serpent is a snake. And set it on a pole. So like the pole over there that the cross is on, like a long stick. Set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, have you guys ever been bit by a snake? Yeah, I haven't either, but I don't think it would be very nice at all, would it? Even if it wasn't poisonous, I wouldn't want it to happen. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is wonderful. So God gave them away so they wouldn't have to die from the snake bites. 
He said, make a metal, um, like a sculpture of a snake. And the people, when they get bit, they look at that snake on the pole and they won't die. And that's what happened. Because God is great. And he had mercy on those people. That's from Numbers chapter 21. Now the next Bible passage was um, Ephesians 2. And here were a couple sentences from that reading. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Can you guys say grace? Can you say saved? Can you say faith? Those are three wonderful Christian words that God in the Bible has taught us. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Can you guys say not? Can you say gift? What are some times when we receive gifts? Birthday. What's another one? Christmas and birthdays, right? Well, God gives gifts every time we come into his house. He gives the gift of his Holy Spirit. He gives the gift of forgiveness of sins, where he forgives our sins. That's a gift. And finally, when we come to heaven, he will give us the gift of everlasting life. Wow. We even have that gift already now by faith. Wow. And the last part of it is not a result of works so that no one may boast. You guys know what it means to boast? How about if I change the word a little? Brag? You know what it means to brag, right? What are some things that maybe at school sometimes people might brag about? Can you think of anything? <laughs> okay, so people who are real fast, she said, with a particular activity in, in the class, and, um, and they kind of bragged that they went so fast and they got it done. The Bible, God in the Bible says, nobody gets to brag about being uh, a child of God who has an eternal home in heaven. Nobody gets to brag about being a son or daughter of God because we didn't do anything to be able to be God's children. We didn't do a single thing. But somebody did something, and his name is Jesus. He did everything. So that brings us to the John 3 reading, which talks about the Son of God, whose name is Jesus, right? For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Condemn means the judge saying, you are guilty, you will now go to jail, or you will now pay a fine, or you will now do some other punishment. Condemn, you're guilty. Jesus, God, God's son, came into our world not to condemn you, not to condemn me, but to do what? Save us, you were listening right, to save us. To save us from condemnation. We deserve condemnation. Our sins are many. But Jesus died for our sins out of his great love, which is why we have crosses in church. And on Easter he rose. And he is your Savior. He is my Savior. He's the Savior of the whole world. Everyone in the whole world. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world, that's everyone. I think today's Bible readings were wonderful Bible readings. So encourage your mom and dad there when you go back to your pew to bring your bulletin home and to use that purple page um, in your maybe devotions at home this week as you remember those Bible verses that we just talked about. You guys can go back to your seats and we're going to sing the... Uh, next hymn, it's found printed in your bulletin, not in your hymnal, There is a Redeemer.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Ellie is a teenage bride in James Michener's Centennial, a historical fictional novel about Colorado, which I am reading now. If anything, anybody knows anything about James Michener novels, it takes a long time to read a James Michener novel. Now in chapter six of Centennial, we meet Ellie, a homely young girl who lives in an orphanage in eastern Pennsylvania, Mennonite country. Levi Zent is a neighbor and acquaintance, a young bachelor who rather innocently became entangled in a scandal that resulted in his being ostracized from his family and the community. In time, Levi resolves to head west, following the waves of settlers looking for a better life in Oregon if he can make it that far. The year is 1844. Before leaving, Levi stops at the orphanage and invites Ellie to come along. She agrees. They are promptly married, and they begin the arduous journey west. After many months and many dangers, Levi and Ellie have arrived with some travel companions in the Colorado-Wyoming area, and the decision is made to cease the journey to Oregon and set down stakes right there. When Ellie reveals she is pregnant, her husband Levi confesses he's known it for quite some time. Ever since the day his hearty and courageous wife nearly got washed away during a river crossing, and Levi noticed her protecting her stomach as she fell from the wagon. So now, with great expectation, the two young pioneers who have come to share a very special marital bond in a very short time, make plans for their new life. That evening, Michener describes how this devoted husband, Levi, wandered over the prairie collecting buffalo chips so that Ellie would not have to work. Ellie, his devoted bride, was meanwhile penning what would be her final letter to her orphanage friend, Laura Lou. Michener's next paragraph reads, Next morning, Ellie was up early to prepare breakfast. And as she moved briskly toward the small pile of buffalo chips that Levi had gathered for her, she did not heed the warning sound. And as she stopped to lift a large chip, a giant rattlesnake bigger around than her arm struck with terrifying speed and sank its fangs deep into her throat. Within three minutes, she was dead. Boy, when I read that... Took me totally by surprise, took my breath away. And as you read the book, you just wonder, why? Why, Ellie? Such a tragedy. Well, the reader of Numbers need not wonder why fiery serpents, venomous and deadly, struck the children of Israel. And the people became impatient on the way, and the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there's no food, no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Referring, of course, to the heaven-sent manna with which Yahweh had been nourishing them and their children for the last three decades plus. Then Yahweh sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many people of Israel died. This event of rebellion and chastisement was a well-known part of Israel's history, so much so that right down to Jesus' day, he mentioned it in his nighttime dialogue with the Pharisee Nicodemus, which is what John chapter 3 is all about, that conversation with Nicodemus. But before we get to that, stop and think concerning yourself. Have you, like the Israelites, ever complained about the way that God has treated you in life? Have you ever despised his provision? God, why did you bring me here? God, why is my life so dull and difficult? God, why haven't you given me better things? Measured by the standard of the holy and undivided heart that God demands of us, his human creatures, we all deserve the venom. Or were you just mouthing words when you spoke earlier of all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal 
That means now in time, and eternal, that means after death, punishment. Those words, whatever you meant when you said them, are completely true for all of us. For indeed, for those who treasure and adore the glittering created things of this world more than the glorious creator, for them, a fatal snake bite could actually be considered a light punishment. For those who, like us, whose very breath depends utterly and entirely upon God, and yet who treat God like a good luck charm to be taken down off the shelf when we need him and put back when we want to live our own way, for people like this, the eternal pangs of hell are hardly an unjust punishment. And it will not do to appeal to our weak nature to say, give me a break, Lord, I'm only human. No, you're a fallen human being. And that's just the point. Your very fallen, corrupted nature, because of which you commit sins, that very corrupted nature is damnable. Not my words. St. Paul, by the Holy Spirit, in today's epistle, we were, by nature, children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. You want a break from God, is that right? A little leniency? A little understanding? When it comes to his law, God will not and cannot relax his perfect standard of justice. For as Psalm 5 says, you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not dwell with you. So the ungrateful Israelites were struck by their snakes. And the law solemnly warns you and me, the wages of sin is death. For all that, God is also merciful. No, let me say it differently in the words of the Holy Spirit. He is rich in mercy. To the, chast to the chastened Israelites, Yahweh provided a remedy through the bronze snake on the pole. Look upon the snake. God's word through Moses instructed the people, and you will live. And so it was. And in time, something even more marvelous happened. A snake on a pole became a man on a cross. The antidote and the remedy not just to snake venom, but to the eternally deadly poison of sin. Jesus, speaking to Nicodemus, declared, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. In John 3, today's Holy Gospel, Jesus Christ is set before our eyes as the Son, the Son of God and the Son of Man come down from heaven, as Jesus had said in just the previous verse before our text. Jesus, God's Son, is here set before our eyes as the one sent by God to be our Savior. The one sent by God to be our Savior from condemnation. Did you hear that? So clearly is this set forth in the following verse that John 3.16 has become undeniably the most well-known verse in the whole Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Here the Holy Spirit teaches our hearts one wonderful truth after another. First, the Holy Spirit teaches our hearts that God loves the whole world, which of course includes us. Despite our damnable sin, God yet loves us. Second, this Bible verse teaches how God demonstrated his love for us, namely, that God gave his son an expression that refers to God giving his son into death on the cross to save us. God gave his son, his only son, to the cross, the place where our substitute absorbed the full heat of the wrath of God against sin 
And friends, here is where we may rejoice that no leniency was given to Jesus so that you may know that your sin and your guilt have been atoned for down to the very last sin, lest there be some unfinished work still needing to be done and thus leaving you uncertain as to your salvation or with a still uneasy conscience before God. No, no, God gave his son no break as Jesus was paying the humanity-wide debt of rebellion and iniquity. That debt was thoroughly paid. All the offenses from the Garden of Eden to the end of time, completely punished and atoned for by that perfect sacrifice. And thus your salvation stands assured. See, it stands assured according to the statement of your Savior from his cross. It is finished. And the work being finished, you are now invited to believe. To believe that it is for you, as the word clearly says, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. You are invited to believe in the Savior Son. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. What blessed words to heavy hearts. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. What perfect refreshment to weary souls. Whoever believes in Jesus is not condemned. You can find your comfort and your peace in this divine word now and tomorrow and on the day of your death. Faith alone saves indeed. This is the glad teaching. But if faith alone saves, then nothing besides faith saves. And unbelief condemns. To set aside Jesus as the Savior and to seek some other way is a dead-end option. The Scripture says, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. So as the beloved of God, we are admonished to lay hold on Jesus, to lay hold on him by faith as our Redeemer, as his word says. He has come into the world as the light from God above. Indeed, his light makes us aware of our sin, and that's a good thing. For Jesus comes and approaches us, not in such a way as to terrify us, but rather that that he would invite us to lay down our burden at his feet. We bring our sins to Christ in confession. I am heartily sorry for them, we say, and we pray in these Lenten days, for the gift of a contrite heart and true repentance. For we do not want to be those who try to hide from the light, but who practice the daily habit of repentance. We want to do what is true, as the text says, which is to confess the truth about ourselves. I have sinned. I am sorry. And to confess the truth about Jesus also. He is Lord. He is risen. He alone has redeemed me and all people by his blood. Such are the deeds of the Christian, which, as the text says, have been carried out in God. Today, thanks be to God for his love for us and for what his love for us led him to do. Send his son, not to condemn us, but to save us. Believing in Jesus, we have eternal life. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us stand and sing the offertory. Please turn to page 192.
be seated for the offering. Let us stand for prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord God, in these Lenten days, we pray that you would draw us into your light. Expose where we, like your people of old, have thought, spoken, and acted against you, that in repentance we might look to your Son lifted up on the cross for our salvation and be saved from your righteous wrath. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, you led the saints by the straight way of faith in your Son until they reached your heavenly city, as we join in their eternal thanksgiving for your steadfast love and wondrous works to the children of man. We pray that you would faithfully lead us to our heavenly home. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, you love the world by giving your only Son that whoever believes in him might, might be saved. We pray that you would bless the work of your church and those called to preach the gospel. By your Spirit, create and sustain saving faith within us and all who hear your word, that we may not be condemned but saved and raised up with Christ to be seated with him in the heavenly places. Lord, in your mercy... O God, you have made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins. We pray that your spirit would be at work within us, that we may not carry out the sinful desires of our bodies and minds, but be your workmanship in Christ Jesus, walking in the good works you have prepared for us to do in him. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord God, you have set Joseph, our president, Kim, our governor, as authorities over us for our good. Bless and sustain them with all they need to govern us, that we might be ruled wisely and in accord with your will. Bless also Brad, our mayor, as well as the police and all public officials who serve us in the Cedar Rapids community. Lord, in your mercy. O God, you are our light and our salvation. Hide in your shelter, Howard Bruner, Sharla Moore, Lowell Schrader, and all who suffer in body, mind, or soul. Keep them in their day of trouble from falling into faithless fear, and uphold them with your peace in Christ. By the might of your strong arm, preserve in safety also all those who travel during this spring break holiday. And God, let your blessing be upon your servant Eldred, that his days on this life might be full of the peace that passes understanding and be lived to your glory. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns 
with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. He, your Son Jesus, has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.